Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first uh, Business Before Hours of 2022. I'm excited to have you all here. Oh, thanks. Um, I think I've said hi to mostly everybody, but if I hadn't seen your lovely face for the new year, happy new year and welcome again. Um, so this morning, I'd like to um, introduce all our chamber board members Bird, or board of Directors that are here this morning. Um, if you can please wave, R.D. Burley, Renee James, Tony Matthews, Todd Fallman, uh, Felicia Kreider, Tracy Goldsby, and Kevin Daniels is here with us this morning. Uh, oh, and Commander Matthew Lovrick. Oh, and Scott Peterson is also here. This is what happens when I don't get your RSVP, guys. <laughs> I forget you. Um, anyways, so just a reminder, if you have not voted um, on the 2022 Board of Directors or the changes of the chamber, you should have received an email on that. We do have ballots by the uh, check-in desk, so if you want to see Anne, please let us take a moment to vote and let us know um, if you should have any changes. Oh, I forgot to mention, Jason Smith is also on our board. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Um, okay, now to introduce our uh, breakfast sponsor, um, please help me welcome Coastal Community Bank, um, Rhonda Snyder and Stacy Reynolds to the stage. Testing. Okay. I think it's working. And then just that. And do you have the clicker? Yeah, it's right here. Ryan, can we get their presentation? Well, while we're getting that, good morning, everybody. Super excited to be here today. Um, and I love. Uh, doing the sponsoring and getting the opportunity to come out and talk to you guys. But I know almost all of you, so this morning I thought I'd do something a little different. And I invited my partner, um, Stacy Reynolds, who um, does our merchant service services for Coastal Community Banks. So whenever I work with a business that um, processes um, payments using credit cards, I bring Stacy in to help me take care of their credit card processing needs. Did you want to oh, introduce yeah. yourself, Stacy? Absolutely. Tell um, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to join you today. Um, my name is Stacy Reynolds. I'm a senior credit card processing specialist with Coastal. I've been in banking for over 25 years, which is kind of crazy, but I have. And I've worked for Coastal for the past 10 years, specializing in credit card processing services. Let me see if I can get this going. Need the magic touch. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Okay, I think our clicker's broken. I can continue on. I can continue on. Oh, there we go. Did it work? There I am. Then the next slide. Perfect. Oh, wait. No. No, that's right. No, it went like really far. No, that's the beginning. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, at Coastal Community Bank, we believe that banking is all about relationships. That's why we're proud to work with you in an ongoing effort to be the best resource and partner for you and your business. Hope I'm not speaking too loud. Coastal has a local team of processing specialists um, that specialize and work with businesses in a consultative manner. And we pride ourselves on tailoring processing solutions to meet the needs of each and every business. Good job. Sure. So next is your question. Oh, well. <laughs> OK, I don't know why I'm having issues with this. There 
There you go. I have to keep turning on and off. You need a new battery. Um, okay, Stacy, so tell me what kind of solutions do you offer? Awesome. So Coastal offers a full range of competitive solutions. Um, I've included a few of them in the slide that we'll highlight in the next, well, next slide. <laughs> I would love to do that. So we offer the latest um, EMV compliant terminals. And what EMV essentially means is the chip technology. So all those cards you see with the embedded chip, that is the most secure way to process. We also have uh, mobile payments, which is through Clover. That's all the little fancy white Clover Flex terminals, the wireless, um, and the little card readers, and the whole point of cell system. We also have a web-based um, processing solution where your computer is your device. And what's really nice about that is it offers the convenience of reoccurring payments. You can do invoice payments where you email your customer where they have an option to click a link, and they can pay by credit card. So that's been very um, popular lately. We're going blind here, guys. That's all right. You guys show me one question. All right. So Stacy, how do you choose the right credit card processor? Awesome. So <laughs> um, choosing the right processor is essential when you're accepting credit card payments from your customers. Your processor should be a resource and partner for your business. And I've highlighted a few things to look for. And believe it or not, the number one thing is, is being able to reach your processor by phone. And that's one thing Coastal prides ourselves on, is we are able to be contacted and resolve issues and concerns and so forth. But that's um, a number one concern for most people. A team of dedicated professionals that are going to work with you on the right processing solutions. So throughout the year, th things change. And then a staff that can assist you with technical troubleshooting. Believe it or not, all those fancy terminals you see, they sometimes have issues. So who do you call? You call your processor with confidence they're going to resolve your issue when you have a customer sitting in front of you wanting to pay you. So that's another thing to look for. And also um, a PCI compliance department, and we have that as part of our um, offering. And PCI essentially means a credit card brand compliance requirement. So if you are a business that accepts credit cards, you have to do an annual questionnaire to ensure that you're processing securely and we're a partner for you in that area. So why is it important to review your merchant services? Great question. The benefits of reviewing your processing services annually is to determine if your current processing method still makes sense for your business. Things change all the time. It's also a great way to review additional services. So let's say you are in an office setting and you have a credit card terminal, but you're hiring some staff to do some um, basically in the field payments. Well, then you're going to need to add a mobile solution. So it's always good to look at your services every year, each and every year because you want your customers to pay you in multiple ways. And then our shameless plug in today's ever-changing climate and growing threat of security breach is important to partner with the right people. And we're here for you. Um, as far as um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share an overview of credit card processing services. And Rhonda is going to close with a few closing remarks. Thank you, Stacy. Um, thank you so much for coming down. Um, Stacy uh, covers all of coastal branches and works with me wherever I go, but she lives in Camano, so she came down from Camano this morning to join us. So we appreciate you coming. We do have a table of goodies over here, so definitely come check out our table. Help yourself to any of the little fun little goodies that you want. And there is a sign-up sheet if you're interested in having Stacy review your merchant services. It doesn't cost you anything, there's no obligation, but that way she can just let you know if you need to look at your compliance, if you're paying a fee that you shouldn't be, or if maybe we could save you money. And for the first two people that sign up for a review, we have a little surprise for you. So definitely go over, check out the, what we have at the table, and sign up if you're interested in a review. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, those ladies know how to improvise. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> now, before I, we get started with our guest speaker, guest speaker, I would like to introduce you to the team that put this business before hours event together. 
The committee in charge of today's event is our Military Affairs Committee, known as the MAC. Please help me welcome to the stage um, our Chair R.D. Burley, committee members Commander Matt Leverink, Kim Thompson, Jason Smith, Alicia Jonas, Kevin Daniels, Todd Talley, and Michael Gonzalez. Thank you, Vaughn. It should work, hopefully. And is this mic on? This one too? Yeah, this mic is on. And this okay, great. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? All right, we're hopefully going to have some slides up uh, here in just a second. Are you going to be? Uh... Well, okay. Enough, enough space up there. Well, great. Hey, uh, thanks so much. Um, the Military Affairs Committee, at, at, uh, as a part of the Tule uh, Mil uh, Marysville Tulalip Chamber, has only been around for the last couple of years. Um, we've, we've always had a presence in the community and a great relationship with uh, Naval Station Everett and the uh, Reserve Center and Smoky Point. Uh, but it was only formalized as a committee just a couple of years ago. And so this fine group of people standing up here have all uh, have their day jobs, but also were, uh, wanted to be dedicated to uh, helping connect and bridge with the military families, uh, veterans, active duty service members in, their, in, in the uh, Marysville Chulalip area. So what we did is we came up with a mission statement, and you can see that up there. I'm not going to read it to you, but it, it's also on our web page. You can see that as well. But that really is just embodies what we're trying to do as a group and as an organization, and uh, we're, we're trying to help support those that are serving our country that live in the area. All right. Technology challenge. There we go. So you can see here that just a couple pictures from uh, we, we have a combination of civilians, veterans, uh, retirees that have all served uh, in, in uniform or serving in the community. And here's just a couple pictures of, of those various things in action from uh, welcoming ships uh, as they came home from deployment at Naval Station Everett to the work that was done uh, while some of us were in, in uniform to reaching out to the local community and helping give out food. Just some of the things that we do. Uh, we were all introduced. I'll give us a chance in just a second for everyone up on stage to introduce themselves formally. But this is our group, and we are. Uh, I know there's a couple out there who have reached out to tr to uh, join our team, and I will get in touch with you soon, uh, so that way we can uh, we can connect and, and have you join the MAC. Okay. Uh, what we do is we meet the first Friday of every month at 7:30 in the morning, and uh, we've done a mix because of this COVID. It's been a little bit tough, so sometimes it's virtual, sometimes it's in person, and we've even done a little hybrid. So. It does fit with whatever your needs are. If you want to come join us at the chamber office, you can. And if you want to uh, just dial in on your computer in your fuzzy slippers at home, that is welcomed as well. Uh, the web page is up here, um, and that also provides on, on our web page. We're still building it, but it's, it's a work in progress, and, it, and it's, uh, it's got a lot of great links on there with some, um, some list of local businesses that are providing military discounts, veteran-owned businesses, and companies with veteran and uh, spouse hiring practices. So. Uh, we're going to continue to build that and make it a, a resource for anyone that is, is in the area that needs that information. Uh, and if you're interested in joining, please, uh, please let me know. And I'm going to turn it over. First, we'll do uh, Jason. I think that mic's on there. Please tell everyone about yourself and why you joined the MAC. Is it on? Yeah. You hear me? Oh, whoa. <laughs> so I'm Jason Smith. I'm the Director of Human Resources for the City of Marysville. Uh, I'm also a retired Marine, spent 20 years, 6 months, and 13 days in the Marine Corps. No, it's, anybody in would tell you it's, you're not really counting, it just happens. Uh, I, you know, as a person who has, you know, both in the reserves and active duty and has transitioned from active duty, uh, I went into higher education for the first 15 years and then I would transition to human resources. It's just finding employers that can see all the different skill sets that you bring as somebody who's been in the military and often we can get labeled or viewed in a certain way and so just it was important to me to be part of the community but to be able to serve and to help others understand like the military members have a lot to offer so thank you good morning my name is kim thompson and i'm a va home loan specialist with prime lending my husband and i moved to snohomish county in 1995 after he finished his time with the navy so i know what it's like to move to a new community and um, i've been blessed to live here raise my kids here serve here and uh, it is a true passion of mine to help veterans and service members to utilize their va home loan benefit i also like to connect people so it's um, always great when you can have new people come into the community and they're looking 
looking for where do I go for this or how can I get some help for this. So I love being able to do that. That's why I joined the MAC, to help other service members and veterans. Uh, I'm Alicia Jonas with Kendall Auto Group, so Kendall Ford of Marysville, Kendall Subaru of Marysville, and Kendall Chevrolet. Um, we've been, Kendall Auto Group has been around for over 85 years. Um, we're in several different markets, but any market we're in, we know how valuable our military is, uh, whether it's active duty or, or veterans. Um, my father retired from the Army as uh, Chief of Public Affairs. My ex-husband was a Marine. My roommate's a... Uh, uh, in the Air Force, so I'm surrounded by military, and I couldn't be more excited to be surrounded by mil military personnel because of the fact of what they do every single day of their lives. Um, as for Kendall, we believe that being the conduit between military, active duty veterans, or what have you, to the community is extremely valuable because of what they have done you know, in their service and then after what they do and all the services and skills that they provide us. But to help lift them up and make sure that they are connected is extremely important to us. And that's why Kendall um, fully backs the, the MAC and also the military. And we are proud to be a part of this committee and this community. Good morning, I'm Commander Matt Lovering. You might wonder why I'm on the MAC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Executive Officer of Naval Station Everett. I'm also the, uh, the Navy Region Northwest Liaison of the Marysville to Lalep Chamber of Commerce. So that's why I'm on the MAC, is to liaise with the group, and, uh, and I'm also on the board to liaise with the board to, to help that contact point with the, with the, um, with the Naval Station. I, I personally have been in 27 years 11 months and 14 <laughs> days. Um, not that I'm counting, just adding. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, any questions you have about the base, any, any questions you have about um, what we can do, what we cannot do, because that's also important, right? Um, there's usually a legal and an ethical review on everything that we do, and I'm your touch point for figuring out how to get the yes if we can get the yes. So if you got any questions, just let me know. Good morning, I am Kevin Daniels with Loan Depot. I am a mortgage loan specialist. Um, and for myself, I know, I'm tall, but I think most people can see me. Um, so similar to the way Kim is, being able to um, advertise and know what kind of benefits are available for military service members. I have a service member myself, I know the power of a VA loan and the power it gives in both home ownership, wealth building, um, and just general stability in your life. So being able to both do that myself and communicate that and educate others in that is a personal goal for myself. Thank you. I'm Michael Gonzalez. I uh, work for Evergreen Goodwill Northwest. I am a retiree, 20 years, um, 14 days, and like eight hours or something like that. Um, I actually did 25 years because I did five years of uh, reserve time as well, so I was a civilian during that time. And um, the reason I wanted to join this team and be part of this is because um, with employment, it goes uh, further with um, those that have been coming off active duty. Um, and the fact that um, every year I'm very vocal and very in, in touch with the fact that there are 22 veterans a day dying um, from suicide. I was one, almost one of them, and I wanted to um, be part of something that help people get through those those hard times in life. Um, thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Oh, photo shoot. Just yeah, just uh, we're not behind the podium. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Okay, let's give them another round of applause. Thank you all for your service that you have done for um, country and for what you're doing for Marysville Tulalip. So now I'd like to introduce you to Olivia Burley, who's the military spouse liaison for Washington State Department of Veteran Affairs. 
I thought I had a long title, Olivia. Um, as the military spouse liaison for the Washington State Department of Veteran Affairs, Olivia Burley is focused on reducing and removing employment barriers for the military spouse community and ensuring resource information distribution to military spouses. She has been a military spouse for 19 years and is the daughter of dual military par parents. Prior to joining WDVA, Olivia worked for Operation Homefront and the American Red Cross, providing services to support military families and service members. Her presentation today is about engaging the military community to grow your business. Please help me welcome Olivia Burley to the stage. Already is it 20, not 19? Would, oh, it isn't 20. Uh, sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm like, wait. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. RD is my husband. Um, and I don't know the last time I spoke and he was in the audience. So forgive me for being a little bit nervous. Um, we'll see how we, how we do. Uh, let's see. The, the click. Oh, it's right here. So I don't really need to talk about myself because Yvonne just did it. Um, but I do want to ask something before I dive into my presentation. If you, are, sorry to ask you to do this, but if you are a, a currently serving member of the military, would you stand, please, including our National Guard and Reserve members? If you are currently serving, if you, thank you. If you are a veteran, could you stand? If you are a veteran in the, thank you very much. Please stand, veterans. If you're, thank you. Thank you very much. If you are a military spouse of a veteran or a currently serving service member, could you please stand? Thank you so much. Thank you for your service. We appreciate you, obviously. That's why we're here today. Um, I put some information about the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs on the table over there. Um, and if you are a veteran, I do urge you to connect with WDVA uh, to ensure that you are receiving all the benefits that you've earned. A lot of times people are not, including my own parents, who I <laughs> encouraged to connect, and my, my dad was startled to discover there was a benefit he hadn't engaged with. The mission of WDVA is serving those who served, and our vision is that all Washington veterans and their families are connected to their earned benefit. WDVA does that through a, a large variety of programs and services, uh, long-term nursing care, not going to go into a lot of detail here, support for homeless veterans, veteran cemetery and estate management, support for incarcerated veterans. Sorry, I'm struggling with this device. There we go. Veteran cemetery and estate management, claims and benefits assistance, which if you are a veteran, that's what I was just encouraging you to plug into. There's information on this flyer at the table so you can contact them. Our counseling and wellness programs for the mental health and safety of our veteran and their family community, as well as actively serving military members. We have a variety of programs in this category, including suicide prevention. And then the Washington State Military Transition and Readiness Council, which is a partnership between federal, military, and private organizations to collaborate on initiatives focused on employment and transitioning for service members as well as military spouses. That is the area that I fall under in the Military Spouse Initiative for Washington State. My position was created by the Washington State Legislature in 2019. Due to COVID, it wasn't hired until 2021, June, thankfully, because then I was able to get the job. Um, I originated the role this past June. We're the first state in the United States to have a military spouse liaison, but Virginia followed Washington and they, they hired a military spouse liaison through legislation in September. So the mission of my initiative is serving those who served by serving military spouses and the vision is that every military spouse in the state of Washington is empowered and supported on their journey to fulfilling their needs and finding meaningful employment. So in this presentation, I'm going to go through four key points. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to say is going to seem kind of boring, so I'm going to talk kind of fast, not go into a lot of detail, but RD promised me that I could put these slides up on the MAC website. Is that still true? Okay. Thank you. So, so that way I won't have to like 
go too much in detail. And if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you can go. I made this presentation just for you, just for you guys. So you can go online and read it in more depth um, when you've had a couple more cups of coffee. Um, but before I dive in, I do want to say I need a round of applause for my husband because he stayed with my parents so I could come here early this morning. My parents are driving our kids to school today. And if you have in-laws, I left him with my parents this morning. So let's give him a round of applause. Because that is hardcore spousal support right there. That's like the best kind of thing you can ever do. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with bridging the military-civilian divide. And this is important because in, our, in America today, we are getting less and less connected to the military community. It used to be that a lot of people had a direct family member that served, and now that number is reducing and reducing. And there's been a lot of research and study on how that impacts our military community and the civilian community not having strong awareness of the population. I like to start with definitions, make sure we're all on the same page. So in this community, it's really important to understand the difference between active duty, National Guard, and reserve. That matters because you have a military installation in Snohomish County, you have Naval Station Everett. RD was the XO, we have a new XO who's here now. Well, not new, I guess RD left the service two and a half years ago, it feels like yesterday. But um, that's really important. You have a military installation in your county. You also have a reserve center, the um, Marysville um, Reserve Center that's near Smoky Point. So you have a strong National Guard presence, reserve presence, but you also have a strong active duty presence as well. And what active duty presence do you see in this area? Obviously, you have a naval station, but you also have Coast Guard. And so having awareness of the different branches and the different kinds of military engagement is really important to being able to understand this, the culture and serve the community. Um, I'm not gonna go into these definitions, but again, it's gonna be in the slide later. Oh, sorry, this, ah, it's, it's, it's a finesse. I need to softly touch the button. Um, veteran and disabled veteran. Why does that matter? So sometimes when we use the term veteran, some veterans think that the term veteran means that they served 20 years or they served in combat. Veteran means you served. It isn't, it isn't a benefits definition. It means you served in the military. I put up the, the dictionary definition. So it's not a, a how many benefits you receive or if you're connected to the Veterans Administration. It means that you gave your service to our country. So if you're a business, and you are defining programming or support for the community and population, you wanna make sure that you are understanding what terms you're using and you're identifying correctly with the population. Disabled veteran is also another word that is sometimes misunderstood. That disabled veteran, um, there's a disability rating that you receive from the Veterans Administration when you leave service. And that doesn't mean um, that you on the out outwardly of Fa uh, facing may have physical disability. Disability can be unseen. And so that rating isn't tied to inability to work. And that's a lot, that's very confusing for people. So we wanna make sure that we're understanding what definitions are. And you can go into that more, more detail if you'd like later. Um, military retiree is generally someone who served 20 or more years in the service and then was left the service, and I always want to, I always mess up how I say this, with a discharge that was other than dishonorable. I think I, I think I, thank you, I stutter over that word. Um, so that's important to understand military retiree as well. And then military spouse, as a military spouse, that term is frustrating to me because we know what active duty means, we know what currently serving means, we know what veteran means. Military spouse is this weird term are you a military spouse of an active duty service member? Are you a military spouse of a veteran? Who, who does that entail, what is that including? Most military spouses, uh, most veteran spouses call themselves military spouses. Most active duty spouses call themselves military spouses. So if you're a business and you're running a program or giving a discount and you think military spouse means active duty military spouse, you wanna make sure that you're defining that. It's fine if that's what it means, I'm not encouraging you to do one thing or the other, but just make sure that you're providing definition because it's not very fun to get up to the counter 
and be told, oh, this is only for active duty, not all military spouses. Uh, so just make sure that you have a, a definition. And then military spouse also includes caregiver spouse, retiree spouse, um, National Guard and Reserve spouse. We also have gold star families, spouses, and mothers who lost a service member, a uh, family member, while they were serving. The branches of the service, there are now six because we have Space Force, and they all have different names. So one of the ways you can ensure that you are understanding the culture and the population is to use the correct terminology. Um, people frequently ask me, oh, your airman, your your, um, your airman, how, how, when did he retire? My husband is a sailor, he is not an airman. And each of the branches has their own identifying language. But if you really want to be um, inclusive and not make a mistake, you can say service member. Service member uh, doesn't identify gender, it's inclusive of the many females that are in our service. And then it also protects you from making a mistake if you're not sure of the terminology and the Space Force are guardians. That is a true thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. We don't have, I don't think we have any here. I cannot very softly touch this. There we go. Um, population information. So for your marketing and outreach, for your understanding of how many people are in the community in this category, there are 51,606 veterans in Snohomish County. Naval Station Everett, these numbers fluctuate, but there's nearly 3,000 military and civilian personnel, according to my sources that I cited, because people always raise their hand and say, it's 3,010 now, or, so I always say, I have a source. Um, and then that supports an active duty and dependent population of over 5,000 people in Everett alone. Now these numbers don't include the National Guard and Reserve members stationed at the Marysville Smoky Point Reserve Center, and how many people come whenever they have their drill weekends and their drill uh, duty time. Because they may not live locally, um, but they're certainly impacting the local economy and business. Okay, lifestyle. If you're in the military, your life and your work are com connected, they're combined. Military kind of owns you. They own what you wear, they own what you look like, um, they own where you go, they own what, <laughs> how you work pretty much 24-7. Um, so that's important to understand when you're serving the population that they don't really have a lot of control over their lives. Their family members don't have a lot of control and neither do the service members. And they're supported, but they're not in control. That makes sense. Um, another thing that's important to understand is military population, particularly transitioning service members, obviously, um, they will approach based on an MOS, an NEC, or an AFSC whenever they're looking for work. And they will talk about that, which was their job function in the service. And so I put the definitions up here. Uh, MOS is Military Occupational Specialty. In the Marine Corps, it's a four-digit number. The Army is a number and a letter. In the NEC is the Navy Enlisted Classification, which is also termed rate. And that's utilized by Coast Guard and Navy. And AFSC is Air Force Specialty Code. Why this matters is if you're hiring and you're looking for employees, we, we encourage transitioning service members not to use that on their resumes, but frequently they do. And so if you see a jumble of letters and numbers, this is what they're referencing. This is my own personal tip too, because we're in a Navy community. A lot of Navy service members, if they are enlisted and they're, you, they have an NEC number, a letter and number, um, they will inter they, that's what will be on their email signature block. And you might be confused by what that means. Personally, and no one's ever told me this, but I'm gonna tell that this is my gift to you today. I think that it is disrespectful as a civilian to address a Navy service member by their rate. It is appropriate to say Petty Officer Smith instead of their rate in front of their name. Their rate is used internally and we owe them the respect to use their rank. If their signature block does not involve their rank, which frequently it doesn't because they're just trying to make your life hard, um, you should call them and say, ABH1, what is your rank? I would like to address you with respect. And um, service members deserve us using their rank 
and their last name until they tell you to do otherwise. If they're, especially if they're in uniform or you're working with them in a, in a function that involves their military duty. Um, so if they're in uniform, call them by their rank and their last name until they ask you to do otherwise. Now service members say, may say, Olivia is crazy, that's not necessary. Then it's not necessary, the person will tell you otherwise. But they are choosing to serve our country and that is a, a respect that we can all give them. And usually it's pretty easy because they wear their name right like in big letters on the front of their shirt, so it's, it's not that hard. But the rate thing does mess us up. So if there's a bunch of letters and numbers, that is their job duty internally in the Navy and that's not their rank. That's my tip. That if, you, if you walk away with nothing else, just walk away with that. Um, not all active duty service members live on installations or in base housing. There's a lot of confusion about that. I know it seems surprising, particularly people connected to home loan and real estate in the room, because uh, you know that they don't and they're, they're looking for housing in the civilian community. But our, we don't have enough housing on any installation to accommodate all the service members that are serving our country connected to that base. So they live out in the community. They live all over the community around an installation. Naval Station Everett has folks living far north into Mount Vernon and, and further north and far, as far south as Seattle and, and further south than that even. So they're, they're all over. And we need to be aware that in your community there's actively serving military people even if you don't have an installation. And the impact of an installation is farther than the little geography immediately surrounding it. In Snohomish County, the base housing is in Lake Stevens. And again, that's not just where our military families are, but there are a lot of children in our Lake Stevens School District, but there's also a lot of military children in the Marysville and in the Everett School Districts as well, and further, further afield than that also. There are, in a few years ago, the Society for Human Resource Management conducted a study and asked veterans what were the top 15 things that you want people to know so that they can better bridge that military civilian divide. I, I kind of put those all, squished them all together so we could just run through it quickly. But if you want more information, I'm gonna provide you with a resource to go to learn more. Number one, we are not all soldiers. I touched on that. Number two, the reserves are part of the military. So is the National Guard, even if that's not their daily job. That is, they are currently serving members of the military. Number three, not everyone in the military is infantry. The military is like a city. There are people that, there are cooks and firemen and there is a security force and it, it is, there's medical and there's administrative staff, there's HR staff. There's all kinds of different things that happen when you put on uniform. And so just because someone is serving, that doesn't mean that they're in, carrying a gun in conflict. It means that they have a lot of different skill sets and that they're contributing to a larger organizational structure. Number four, we have leaders at every level of the chain of command. Leadership and structure is very important in our military community and uh, developing leaders at every level is something that is really instilled in, our popu in that population. Number five, we are always on duty. I can attest to this because of the number of times my husband's phone used to ring in the middle of the night. Now he works for the library and it rings just as much. It's crazy, I don't know. Uh, number six, we take pride in our appearance and in our conduct. Number seven, we did not all kill someone and those who have do not want to talk about it. I'm uncomfortable saying this on stage, but it's surprising to me how many people ask me if my husband's ever killed anybody. Don't do that anymore. Don't ask people that if they've served in the military or if they're a military spouse. It's just shockingly rude. So if people say that, I'm not friends with them and they make me very mad. So please do not be the person that I don't want to be friends with. Uh, number eight, we do not all have PTSD. PTSD is not, um, is, is not something that every military service member or veteran has, and there are steps and, and, and support programs to overcome um, issues with PTSD, and it doesn't need to be something that we don't talk about and something that we're afraid to, to voice. Number nine, those of us who do not have an invisible wound are not dangerous, we are not violent. Number 10, it is really hard for us to ask for help. That's why we have to do more as a community, not only to market to and engage our military community and our businesses, but to support them and make them part of our community. Number 11, our military service changes us. 
Number 12, we differ in how much we identify with the military after we leave active duty. There is, just like in the civilian sector, there's all different kinds of people. Some people really identify with their job. That's what they lead with. The military is the same way. Just because you serve doesn't mean it's all that you are for every single person, but for some, some mem members of the military, it really d does define them. And just like civilians, it's, it's individual. It's based on the person. Number 13, our families serve with us. Amen. I don't even need to say any more than that. I mean, my whole life has been impacted by being a military spouse. Who knows what, how, what different path I would have taken if this guy didn't meet me in Seattle and take me away. I almost said bozo. I tried not to. Number 14. <laughs> he heard me. He knew I was going to do it. Number 14. We would, like, uh, we would die for each other. We would die for our country. And number 15. We've all made this sacrifice for one reason. And um, that is about honor and service and uh, their commitment to our nation. So those are important things to understand. And I just want, wanted to really share those 15 points with you because that was created by our veteran community when asked, what are the things that matter most for civilians to know about you? Well, if you're starting a program to engage veterans or military service members or their families, you gotta start with what they want you to know about them, right? Those are the things they want you to know. That's how they want you to start connecting. Current concerns that I see in my role with De Department of Veterans Affairs serving military families, military spouse employment is a huge issue. In 2020, it grew to, uh, some studies show 34%. 25% of military spouses reported they had reduced hours. There is chronic underemployment for military spouses and unemployment for military spouses. We have to do better. We're working on it as a state. We're working at it as a nation. And we need more partners in the civilian sector to help support these initiatives so that we can get our military spouses the jobs and the, the lifestyle that they deserve. People want to work. They want to have meaningful careers. A uh, lack of quality and affordable childcare. Um, again, we're working on initiatives to address this as well. Childcare is an issue for civilians, but if you can imagine moving every three years and restarting, having no family support, very challenging. Very challenging to be a successful military family with those issues. Housing affordability, basic need security, and connecting to appropriate resource are all issues. Man. So what can you do? First is ask the question. Ask the question of your employees, your network, your friend groups, your customers. Are you military connected? Did you serve in the military? Are you part of a military family? What branch did you serve in? Uh, what did you do during your service? Show that you understand the, the culture and the community by the questions that you ask. Then how can you tailor your programs, your services, uh, your outreach to target military community specifically. Don't assume everybody has PTSD. I talked about that. All, wounds are not all visible. It's really important to, t to know that a veteran can be wounded and you may not see it. So don't make assumptions if someone is a wounded veteran um, and you can't tell from the outside. They may not ask for help, so we need to help support them, connecting them to resources, embracing them, making them a part of our community. We talked about how families served with the, with the service member and, um, and that range of how veterans identify with their service. So a couple of resources. If you have military programming or you're connected to offering outreach to the military community, um, if you have discounts or particular um, sales incentives or whatever it is that you're doing that is targeting military, I really encourage you. I, I'm not affiliated with Psych Armor, but they have one of the best free resources for understanding the culture that I've ever seen. And it, there's two, Veteran 101 Military Culture and then a, an in-depth 15 things veterans want you to know. You can go on Psych Armor and just take these classes. It takes about half an hour. I would encourage every person that touches the military community to do that. Uh, by the end of it, I'll figure it out. Marketing to military connected customers. Lord in the heavens. Okay. Just check, oh good. Um, so there's the, the military community, I notice that they are very referral based. There are a variety of social media, um, Facebook pages, 
for uh, primarily Facebook pages for military families coming into this community, into Snohomish County. And um, they, when they arrive, they don't look at advertising. They don't look at Yelp reviews. They go on these Facebook pages and they say, I need a dentist, I need a realtor, I need a loan specialist, I need a doctor. And they ask each other, who should I go to? That is how they find their businesses. They, it's, it's a huge re referral-based um, marketing effort within this community. And I've tried to figure out why that is. Why, why don't they do the pay? Because I come from a marketing background. And so they don't do anything by the book. They're so difficult to market to. And why is that? And this is what I've come up with. And this is an untested theory. But again, my gift to you today. I think that um, because their community and network is so frequently disrupted, these referral-based questions on how to plug in is their first step to gain friendship and connection with their incoming community. So they use the opportunity to ask for referral as an opening for a doorway to make connection and build a network. And so because that's always going to be the first thing they do, you need ground troops, I'm using that military term, you need ground troops that will be your referral sources out in the community. You get a good customer that's a military spouse, say to them, hey, you know, would you be willing to tell people about my business? Because I know that you're connected to the military community. I know you're a military spouse and I really appreciate that. So could I give you some information for you to share with other spouses coming in? That is a great way to spread the word about your business in a really organic way that, that fits the lifestyle and how, um, and how marketing works within this community. Military discounts can drive pur purchases. There's actually been research that the veteran and military community really responds to discounts um, that are targeted to them. I already talked about utilizing military customers in your marketing efforts, but also your employees. Ask your employees who is a military spouse? Who is a military, who, who served? Who is connected to this community? Who is a veteran? Ask your staff. Ask your your vendors so that they can talk about you. Make sure that you're asking the question, not only so that you can improve your program and service delivery, but so you can refer your, improve your marketing and your referral structure. And then engaging on installation. So Naval Station Everett, I've actually put in the slide the contacts um, for commercial sponsorship. They have events on Naval Station Everett where you can have a table or you can advertise, and that's another wonderful way to meet the families and the military service members right where they're at through, through events that are taking place on installation that they're participating in. Okay, eligibility. Uh, this goes back to that definition concept. Just be clear whenever you're offering a program or a discount on who is eligible for it. It's not really fun to get in and realize that this is only for currently serving, it's not for veterans, or it doesn't include National Guard. I'm not telling you that you who you should include in your, in your discounts or your program offerings, but just to be clear on how you define it. There are some bad actors running a nonprofit that targeted military. There are people sometimes who pretend, <laughs> it's crazy to me, I don't, it's such a difficult job, but they pretend to be veterans or they pretend to be service members. So if you, if you want to make sure, you, you cannot assume that it's because someone says it. So if you want to ask for verification, again, I'm not telling you that you need to, but it does happen that people pretend. Um, not everybody has military ID. Not every veteran has a military ID. So I put up here a list of ways that you can verify veteran status, and that's something that you can look at uh, later if that's something that you're interested in. Veterans Day is not the only holiday uh, that is targeted to the military community. So if you want to capitalize on existing holidays, there are a variety of different, this is just some of them. Um, the military really likes the birthdays for their service branches. It's the, the big celebration, there's a big ball, people wear gowns, big deal for the Navy, the other uh, branches do that as well. So knowing the birthday, particularly of the Navy, you're in a Navy area, um, might be something to capitalize on from a business engagement standpoint. 
Um, but there's a listing of military holidays and observations throughout the year that you can also plug into. Oh, my word. And then uh, how to engage. So you have a wonderful resource in the Marysville Tulalip Chamber of Commerce and the Military um, Affairs Committee here. So that's a great way to plug in and target marketing for the, the military community directly. The Economic Alliance of Snohomish County also has a Military Affairs Committee. That's more policy and uh, business development oriented versus marketing. So if that's something that's interesting to you, that's another way to engage with the community. There are uh, organizations, nonprofit organizations and membership-based organizations that are always looking for donations. That's a nice way to show the military that you support them by donating to uh, military serving organizations and then volunteering um, as, an, as a company. Okay, then serving the military by asking for their service. This is primarily targeted at nonprofit organizations that hold events. So the military is, uh, you know, an all-volunteer force, obviously, so they, they know about service, and they know about volunteering. Um, and some organizations are a little reluctant to call upon the military to volunteer. But I argue that some of the best ways that me and my family have become connected to the communities that we've lived in is through plugging in by volunteering. And it's helped us build a network not only of fellow service members and military families, but of also civilians in the community and how the community works. Um, so you're not really asking them to serve by volunteering, you're engaging them. So if you are having an event and you're looking for volunteers, or if you're a nonprofit and you're looking for volunteers, I really encourage you to have specific targeted programming for recruiting volunteers in the military community. Um, because it, it shows them that you care about them. Uh, but I mean, structure it in a way that you're not just looking for bodies. You know, you, you want to target the recruitment in a way that speaks to the service member and their family. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of the benefits to the organization. I mean, it seems pretty obvious that you build constituency, they're going to donate their advocates, um, and they contribute more hours. But as I mentioned, they benefit too. In addition to connecting to the community, making friends, building a network, it's also a chance to develop skills um, and career experience. So a service member that knows he's going to be transitioning might want to develop a certain kind of skill set before they get out, and that could be done through volunteer work. I'm reluctant to tell you to do that for military spouses because everybody knocks on our door because we're unemployed or we're underemployed, so they think, oh good, they can volunteer. So, I mean, but we're great volunteers too. <laughs> uh, veterans, 26.3% of young veterans volunteer in their communities. That's a higher rate than civilians. Older veterans volunteer 186 hours annually, the most time of any group. So they're, they're really great community givers. Um, Got Your Six did this great study in 2016, the Veteran Civic Health Index. It just shows that the veteran population tends to vote at a higher rate, attend public meetings, contacting public officials. I love that. Um, the veteran community does that more than their civilian counterparts. Giving to charity. Um, and then working with, with in, within their neighborhood to fix problems. I mentioned some of the motivators for why military community members would, um, would want to volunteer. That sense of mission, the love of their country, uh, service to the military community, particularly if it's an organization that's, that's providing service to the military families, that's a great uh, motivator. They like to give back, whether it's actively serving or veterans. The Navy, which we're near Naval Station Everett, so I like to focus on the Navy and for this group, but um, the, the Navy Com Community Service Program Guidebook, there's actually a, a guidebook in the Navy for community service among service members. It says, it is the Navy's policy to promote a joint Navy and a community effort to assist in the education and enrichment of America's youth and communities and in revitalizing our citizenry. They have a specific set of goals focused on volunteerism among service members, and five flagship areas of focus, um, good neighbor, personal excellence partnership, health, safety, and fitness, environmental, and campaign drug-free. 
I love that the Navy has that. It's like one of my favorite things about the Navy. Um, recruitment. Membership-based veterans organizations like the VFW, American Legion, Disabled American Veterans are a great place to, to go if you're looking for volunteers. Um, and then the Naval Station Everett has a volunteer coordinator staff person, and she said to me that I can share her contact. I'm assuming this has not changed since I presented this last, but I'll be frank, I did not ask her within the last couple weeks. Um, and the one thing that happens in the military we know is that service members move. So sometimes your contact, you'll, you might have to work to kind of maintain your contacts on installation because they get, they turn over every couple of years. Um, but I will, before we post that, I will confirm that that's still her, her role. Is it good? Yeah. Somebody, oh, thank you. Thank you, Naval Station Everett. Wonderful. And, um, and that is, a, it's really great having a volunteer coordinator um, on installation to, to connect with and let, her, let them know about what opportunities you have. It was mentioned earlier from an ethics perspective that just because you want the, the installation to tell some people about your event or your program or promote your opportunity, that doesn't mean they can. I mean, this is a government organization, right? So, but having the communication is a good starting point, and then if they're able to help and, and involved, then, then they will. But they will tell you no, because I got told no all the time, and I was married to the XO. <sighs> That's okay. Okay, so now, developing your workforce by recruiting and retaining veteran and military spouse talent. Everybody is hiring. Everyone is hiring. If you are in, at your organization, if you have job openings right now, can you raise your hand? Raise your hand really high. You looking to hire people where you work? Uh huh. So there, it's it's a huge issue, and one place that is great to plug in whenever you're struggling to find um, people for the roles that you have available is the veteran and military spouse population. They're looking for work. And um, our, tra our transitioning service members who are currently serving and planning to get out are looking for work. And some of them, some of them have never interviewed for a job before. Like they've been in for a long time. And it's important to understand how military spouses present and how transitioning service members present and how our veterans may present in a resume and an application and in a job interview. Uh, there's a lot of trends in veteran and military spouse unemployment that are important for the business community to have awareness of. I'm putting this slide in here for your information. The Society for Human Resource Management Foundation has a wonderful program as a resource, I'm going to mention it at the end of the presentation, called Veterans at Work. It is a free 10-hour certification that businesses can take to understand how to recruit, retain, and um, recruit, retain and engage the military connected community in their environment. Free, there's no reason that you shouldn't be taking this if you're a hiring person or if you have job openings. It's a great way to understand better how you can create programs for military and the military connected community within your organization so they can be successful employees. Um, I encourage you to take it because then you can say that you are a certified veterans at work organization and you can use this little badge. Uh, but they have some great information on workforce development and recruitment and retention of the military connected community within the business or uh, within the civilian workforce. So we identified quite, quite a few years ago that there were issues with unemployment for the veteran population. And the uh, United States has done amazing work to uh, adjust those numbers so that veteran unemployment is not as high as it was. Uh, military spouse unemployment, though, has, is, just continues to skyrocket. Um, so we need to do better serving both populations, frankly. Veterans are valuable members of the civilian workforce. 65% of veterans have some college education or higher, making veterans more educated than their civilian peers. 68% of employers report that veterans perform better or much better than their civilian peers. Sorry, civilians. I mean, I have to just tell you, this is the, these are the numbers. 57% um, of veterans stay at their jobs longer than the median tenure of two and a half years uh, for subsequent, subsequent roles after their first post-separation job. Oh, what a mouthful. Post-separation means when they got out of the military and they stopped being actively serving. 
So that matters because these are good employees. They're worth recruiting. But on paper, or when they're in their interview, they may seem awkward. A lot of these people have not interviewed since the gap. I don't want to embarrass my husband. Can I say this? Can I tell this? I've already started. I think I have to. My husband served for 27 years in the military. And so when he transitioned in 2019, you know, he was all excited. He's getting his resume together, going for interviews. And he said, the last time I applied for a job was the gap in high school. I haven't applied for a job before the gap. I mean, so he, he loves his job. He's great and he's amazing. So of course he rocked transition, but I don't know what he said in those first interviews. And I'm sure I was, you know, like he's never interviewed before. I, on the other hand, as a military spouse, I interview every two freaking years. I am the best interviewer. I could teach a class and write a book on how to write a resume and do an interview, right? So different populations. I mean, we're in the same house, you'd never know. But it's interesting when you think military spouses are constantly job searching. We're constantly job searching. We're really good at it. And transitioning service members, that may not be their giant skill set. So they may be retiring for the military and not really good at job searching. And if you're a hiring official, you need to know that you may have the best employees sitting in front of you, but they may not be really good at interviewing because they are of the age where they should have mastered this skill, but they've been um, you know, protecting our country for 27 years. So we need to understand that about our transitioning service members, and, uh, and they, they may present differently than their civilian counterparts, and that's just fine. That has nothing to do with what a great job they're gonna do at the job. Uh, veterans face unemployment or employment difficulties. I just mentioned what might be one reason, but 90% of veterans indicate there were obstacles in attaining employment for them. You guys, these are people that gave, they're giving their whole life to our nation. They should not have a hard time getting a job. Let's help them out. We need to be, be doing more so that that number is not 90%. Oh, what did I just hit? Oh, there we go. Uh, military spouses are also highly educated, um, but also experience high unemployment rates. So 84% of military spouses have some college, 25% have a bachelor's, um, but yet 56% of employed spouses report they are working in the areas uh, only 56% of employed spouses report they are working in the area of their education or training. 24% of military spouses report they are unemployed. Due to COVID, that number could be as high as 36%. And um, three time, that's three times higher than their uh, civilian counterparts. <sighs> so frustrating. And then 68% of military spouses are volunteers. These are the skill sets for military spouses and veterans that are, you know, really translate. Whenever you ask employers, that's the column on the left here. What are you looking for in your employees? And on the right are the skills that are strengthened or enhanced by military service. Veteran transitioning challenges. I talked about this a little bit. Um, we, that MOS, that um, occupational code, that rate that we talked about, sometimes that's hard to translate that to a civilian job. And so that's a challenge in seeking employment for veterans. Um, and then resume gaps for military spouses, relocations, childcare, um, un underemployment on a resume and translating that to the position that you're actually looking for. Barriers, challenges, and assets of veterans and military spouses, there's much to overcome to plug them into the workforce development community and your job opportunities. But once they're there, employers say that they're really making a difference and that they're moving the needle for achieving this, the goals for the organization. So we just wanna make sure that we're, we're easing the burden. And one of the ways you can do that is if you get a military spouse resume, try to look past employment gaps. Try to look past, oh, they were really on a great track and then suddenly they've, they're 
have a strange role that's like five steps backward here for a couple years. Oh, I don't, I don't want them. Try to look past that because they're just, they're just trying to serve their country and be a part of a military family, which throws obstacles in their lap that they cannot avoid. Um, you just have to have insight into what a military spouse resume looks like and why it's not going to be the same as a, as a civilian counterpart. Looking at skills versus work history is really the key to this if you're recruiting. That's the, that's, the, that's the bottom line. And if you can get them an interview, grant them the courtesy of an interview because they're a military spouse and they have the right set of attributes on that resume, give them the chance to speak for themselves. The employee life cycle, we, we, recruitment, being ready to bring uh, military connected people into your organization, recruitment, the right kind of onboarding, connecting military spouses at your work with other military spouses, connecting other veterans at your business with other veterans so that they can be successful and stay is key to having a successful implementation of uh, veteran and military spouse employment engagement. I'm gonna leave this in for you to review later, this slide on how to source candidates. There's a lot of organizations that are doing that work. And then this is my final slide and then I'm gonna wrap up. I think I'm doing pretty good. Two minutes. She, you said till 8.40 I could go, right? Okay, I didn't wanna, are you all mad at me? Are you sitting here thinking, God, Olivia, wrap it up, man. This isn't, we're done. Um, the first starting place is Naval Station Everett. Naval Station Everett has a wonderful employment readiness program for service members who are transitioning as well as military spouses. And Amber Hawk is our military, con our contact there at the Department of Veterans Affairs. So if you have job openings and you are thinking that it might be a good fit for the military spouse or transitioning service member community, you can contact Amber and let her know about your, your availability and your openings. She also knows about job fairs that Naval Station Everett is having and can plug you into those. Work source Snohomish County, James W. Lapsley Jr is the Veterans uh, Employment Representative for WorkSource. WorkSource is the American Job Center in Washington State. They have locations across Washington. And uh, they provide skill, uh, interview skills training, resume building training, and job connection uh, for job seekers. They also have specific programs for veterans and some categories of military spouses, not all. Um, but civilians as well. So everyone is eligible to receive the free services there and employers that have job openings can post those job openings with WorkSource. So if you're not doing that, you should. Uh, Discover the Talent is a certification that you can take to show that you are military spouse friendly through the US Chamber of Commerce Hiring Our Heroes program. It's about an hour and it shows military spouses that you are a military spouse friendly workforce. Now, maybe you're not gonna end up hiring a military spouse, but if I'm a military spouse and I need to do business with someone, if they're showing me that they're a Discover the Talent participant, probably more likely to give them my dollars from a, from a business perspective. If you're military friendly and you're doing the work to hire, I'd like to give you my money. <laughs> Just take it. Uh, Veterans at Work Certificate also from the Society for Human Resource Management. I mentioned that earlier. That's another badge that you can show and then Yes Vets is the Washington State um, Employment Security and Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs free program for businesses to register and show that they are interested in hiring veterans. Again, just showing the military community that you're interested in hiring is a, is a marketing tool in and of itself. That's all that I have. I don't think we have a lot of time for questions, but I really appreciate you allowing me to be here today. We'll be posting the presentation on the MAC website, and if anyone would like to reach out and chat with me, I'll be here for a little bit, or you are welcome to contact me separately. Thank you so much. So thanks again, Olivia, for coming this morning. Um, Artie, thank you for getting with your in-laws and having Olivia be here. <laughs> um, let's give Olivia another round of applause, everyone.
Okay, so now for the next portion of our event, please help me welcome Todd Fallman with Realty One Group Orca to the stage. Welcome everybody, let's give it a big round of applause to our military veterans and their spouses. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, Happy New Year everybody, 2022. I see everyone here is looking really good. You've been following those uh, New Year's resolutions and going to the gym, so stick with that. You know, we all have these wonderful goals in mind and it sort of reminds me of some goals that I had as a, as a younger man. And, we go through the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm like, you know, I want to do something. I want to set a goal, and I'm going to get in that book. So I set out to uh, find a way to get in that book, and I came up with this wonderful idea to get in the book, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, to eat a clock. So I set out this goal to eat a clock to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. And as I started getting into that process, I just found out that it was just too time-consuming so I stop. Yeah, thanks. Just seeing if you're awake. Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Okay, I'm a dad, so I got some dad jokes. Hey, we're also here for um, uh, some table networking to get to know new people. And uh, so this portion, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to spend about 30 seconds. You're going to get a chance to introduce yourself to the other people in on, and around your table. So this time, please uh, take out some business cards, and we're going to give it about 30 seconds to each person at the table to introduce themselves, share your business, and when you hear the bell, that'll be uh, time to begin. Thank you so much, Table Networking. We encourage you to continue these conversations and fellowship and goodwill after today's meeting. We'll be here all day, and the Canoe, Cubs, and then the canoe Club is open till 2 a.m., so... Stick around, continue those conversations. Dancing will start at 8 p.m. <laughs> so we're gonna be moving on. You know, a healthy chamber, a healthy chamber of commerce is a growing chamber of commerce. Yes, it is. And we have a healthy chamber of commerce. So if I can have your attention, please, we are now gonna move on to the next section of today's event and introduce our newest members. Yeah, that is something to absolutely, absolutely. So if you hear your name, please come up here to the stage. Each one of you will have 45 seconds to introduce yourself and your business. And I would like to introduce, and please come up front, Pacific Premier Bank. Pacific Premier Bank, please come forward. Debbie Welch, realtor. Debbie Welch, are you here? Please come forward. Yes. Yes. Stoy Realtor, please come forward. Please come forward if you're here today. Thank you very much for your support. And KR Cabinetry, KR Cabinetry, please come up. And also Motto Mortgage Orca, Motto Mortgage Orca, please come up. Let's welcome each one of these new members. Hello, uh, my name is Riley Embley. I am from Pacific Premier Bank. We are also a uh, local business bank, uh, much like our friends at Coastal. We're out here just trying to connect with local businesses. Um, we're new in the region after our acquisition of Opus. So if anybody is out there, has some lending questions for me, I would love to speak with you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next, please. Okay, so I've like never done this before. <laughs> My name's Debbie Welch and I'm a realtor with EXP Realty. Uh, I grew up in Marysville. I'm in Lake Stevens now, but I grew up in Marysville and been here most of my life. Uh, spent about 30 years in healthcare before real estate and I've been in real estate about a year and a half. Always wanted to do it and finally made the transition. Uh, EXP is a cloud-based brokerage, so we don't actually have any brick or mortar, brick or mortar offices. Uh, so my office is my home, which is kind of nice. Uh, They've been great, uh, provided me with everything I needed. Uh, I enjoy working with first-time home buyers, downsizers, veterans, and with relocation. I was really excited to be here today for the presentation. Uh, my husband's retired Navy, 
Uh, I volunteer with Lake Stevens Veterans Commission. We are one of the first veterans commissions around the area. And I'm also certified at, uh, as a military relocation professional. Uh, Dave mentioned multiple times I should probably prepare a little musical number, but I'm going to spare you with that. Uh, <laughs> If there's ever anything I can do to help you or a loved one, please come by and say hi. I'd love to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and welcome to the chamber. Hi, most of you know me. I'm Nancy Denny. I am with Motto Mortgage, soon to be Motto Mortgage Orca. End of last year, Todd came to me and asked me if I would consider leaving the company that I was with prior and becoming his partner in a mortgage company. So we are starting an independently owned local here in Marysville mortgage company. Thank you so much for everything you do for our community. Thank you so much. And I would please welcome you to introduce yourself to our new members after the event. Again, we're here all day until 2 a.m. Music starts at 8. Thank you so much, everybody. You see these tables over here? Yes. Okay? Those are the showcase tables. You're invited to uh, rent and have some space over there. So if you're interested, you want to contact the chamber office. And we'll help you register for a showcase table where you'll be able to display all your wonderful business collateral and have a chance to uh, come up here real quickly on a showcase table. So if you have a showcase table, please come up here real quickly and uh, introduce yourself, a little bit of what you do, and all the wonderful goodies that you have here. So Coastal Community Bank, Coastal Community Bank, Fields Senior Living, Fields Senior Living, okay? McKinnon Financial, McKinnon Financial. You're welcome to come up here real quickly. Hey, just come on up here, just run up or walk, be safe. And then Sherwood Community Services. Sherwood Community Services, absolutely. McKinnon Financial, Field Senior Living, Coastal Community Bank. Please come up here, you have about 30 seconds to introduce yourself and the wonderful goodies you have at your table. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adelaide, and I am a certified financial planner. I have made quite the transition during the COVID years. Used to work with a very large investment company managing traditional stock and bond portfolios. Um, but my neighbor, John McEwen, just up the road by Lake Goodwin, across the street from the North Lakewood Post Office, who specializes in alternative investments, turns out was working for the same independent company that I worked for when I branched out on my own and opened a small financial planning company in Stanwood. Well, we've joined forces, it's part of the whole joining forces, working together, yin and yang. Uh, John is a <coughs> Navy veteran, nuclear sub commander, and he often says in his elevator speech that he made the obvious career transition from Navy nuclear sub commander to long-term care insurance salesman. <laughs> and, and here we all are. So we do love working with military families, any families that are trying to figure it out, you know, save you money on taxes, figure out how to eventually retire, put kids through college, all the things that involve money. So we're just up the road and we're happy to help. Thank you. And we have a little money tree. I have a money tree that's part of the raffle whenever that happens. So That'll be happening soon. Thank you so much. Next, please. Hi, my name is Jessica Shaw. I am with Sherwood Community Services. Um, most of you probably know my other half, Mr. Forde Fireplace, Eric Shaw. Um, so Sherwood Community Services, we're a local nonprofit in Lake Stevens. We provide services to children and adults with disabilities, um, early intervention services, speech therapy, motor therapy, occupational therapy, and then we do employment supports for adults with disabilities. Um, we have, we serve Snohomish County, Skagit County, Island County, and we are now the only vocational provider in San Juan County as well. Um, over at our table, we've got some, we partnered with Malicious Women Candle Company in Snohomish, and we have a 
candle um, that says infused with inclusion. So come over and check that out. They're $20 cash. Um, we also have some information over there about what becoming an impact partner, a monthly donor. Um, we have person first language information about all of our programs. So please come over, say hello, meet Melissa, our director of investment and partnership and um, check out what we've got going on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for what you do. Dex, please. Well, hello again, everybody. So we do want to make sure that everyone knows um, myself, Rhonda, Tony, the branch manager, and Stacy. we all work together as partners to help you have the best um, relationship you can have with Coastal Community Bank. We want to take care of all of your needs. So we are a team. We all work together. So I know it gets confusing when you see so many people here representing Coastal Community Bank. Um, but I am the one out in the community uh, working with businesses, building relationships, helping you have the best team possible to take care of your needs. Tony, the branch manager at the Marysville branch, her and her team there will take good care of you guys and partners with me to help you. And then Stacy again with your credit card processing merchant services to make sure that you have the um, right product and uh, that you have uh, the right savings and that you have a person that you can call to and um, that will answer her phone and help you with your servicing. You wanna say anything? <laughs> I, yeah, as Rhonda said, I'm Tony from the Marysville branch, so I'm located here on 4th and State, and I can help with the vast of needs, whatever you need, whether if it's business, whether it's personal, lending, consumer lending, home equity lines of credit, so please reach out to me if you have any questions. <laughs> Just thank you for the opportunity for me to be here and to share what we offer with Coastal, and we're very proud. and. This is an excellent chamber, so thank you. Thank you so much. With all these ladies here, you don't have to go to the bank. They'll bring the bank to you. <laughs> all right, just wanted to say that. Yeah. So here, next we are moving forward in the program. We are going to be going to roving mics. And the roving mics, this is an opportunity for you to come forward to give a shout out or a kudo to another uh, member of the chamber. So if you'd like to come forward, if you have something really nice to say, uh, you leave the negative comments in the parking lot, okay? So if you want to come forward and uh, give a shout out to uh, another member uh, for their great service or their great work, now would be a great opportunity to do so. So if you'd like to come forward, stand over here to the next to the stage. Once. We have somebody come forward. We have somebody else coming forward. Please come forward, please. And if you give a shout out, you put an extra card for the raffle, some incentive. Go ahead. I just wanted to give a shout out to, Fa oh, hi, I'm Rochelle Fallman with Realty One Group Orca. I wanted to give a shout out to Chris and Aaron um, with 541 IT. 564 <laughs> IT. Anyway, they came to our office. They installed our internet. They helped um, make the connection better and awesome. And they also put it into our new um, area we call the annex. So thank you so much for all your work. They came in at like 6.30 in the morning and worked all day and it got the job done. It was amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Next, please. Jessica again with Sherwood Community Services. Um, so I made little notes because I'm really not very good at speaking in front of large groups of people. Um, so we, Sherwood Community Services has been so honored to have the support from our Marysville Tulalip Chamber members, to name a few, Sir Optimus, Four Day Fireplace, Pure Clean, Pure Dry, Community Transit, KXA, KRKO, Hometown Values, Serve Pro, Waste Management, EASC, just to name a few. Um, we would also like to um, give a shout out to Rick McCarthy and the McCarthy team. Because of his matching dollars, we were able to raise over $6,000 at our Meet Heads event in November. So huge thank you to, to them. So um, yeah, just a, a huge shout out to the support of chamber members. And um, Rick, would you like to add? Yeah, I'd like to add to that just a little bit because we actually shut our advertising off probably 95% of it about a year and a half ago. So instead of paying the internet, and it's basically a bucket with a hole in the bottom that you just shovel money into, we started donating more 
and the work has come in because our reach has gotten so much higher. So I want to talk to all these business owners in here about giving, and there is a ton of giving people in this room, but uh, maybe for new business owners and stuff like that, if you really want to rev up your business, simply show up, give, and it doesn't actually have to be money or anything, but maybe showing up and volunteering. We see Rhonda at about every event, so she represents Coastal quite well. So I just wanted to throw it out there, make it uh, quick and easy. Donate, whether it be time or money, but give. It really pays off, so thank you so much. And Sherwood? Thank you, for, thank you so much for that uh, reminder of the law of reciprocity. You bet. Give where you live. Next, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lily Cervantes with Cruise Planners. I just want to give out a shout to a couple of individuals, our businesses. Number one, the Chamber. Thank you very much for providing um, yogurt and fruit for someone that can't have eggs. I want to say thank you. And also to the IT564. I also, they're my um, IT members or IT individuals who have helped me with uh, computer things. I am a, I'm great with application, but when it comes to technology, not good. You can ask Chris. So thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next, please. I just want to do a quick shout out to a grocery outlet, bargain market. Uh, they gave me a $3 gift uh, uh, value card to actually shop at a grocery outlet, and their address is 9620 State Avenue, Marysville. Thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We're going to be running over just a little bit, but we have saved the best for last because it's time for the raffle prizes. Okay, so if you brought a raffle prize, prize, all right, please come up here. We're going to raffle those off right now. If you have brought a raffle prize with you, please come up. Okay, we'll start with Rhonda. I'm making a habit of coming up here, aren't I? So anybody who likes wine, you should all know me by now that I love to bring the wine. That is my favorite. So let's see who gets to go home with a bottle of wine. Justin. Sky, wa Sky Power Wash. Justin, are you here? Uh -oh. Justin is not in the room. Somebody else gets to get no the wine. No wine for Justin. Uh-oh. Redraw. Lily from Cruise Planners. Yay! Lily's the winner. Okay. Next, please. Satellite again. I I was thinking about this little money tree. Um, you know, we all say money doesn't grow on trees, right? But if you have a 401k or if you're a business and you offer a 401k, make sure your people are contributing at least to the max, you know, the match because that's free money. One dollar in, you get a dollar match, that's 100% return on your money. So, just a little tip. Money grows in 401ks. <laughs> ah. Tanya, from Goodwill. Tanya with Goodwill, good luck with that money tree. Reinvest it. It's seed money, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tracy Goolsby. I'm with the Tulalip Resort Casino, so welcome to Tulalip. Thank you. Um, we are giving away today a um, Blackfish $75 certificate. You can't beat that. <laughs> He's going to run. <laughs> okay. Oops. It's a date night for somebody. Date night goes to 564 IT. Chris. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so I have two, um, two 
two, two tickets for the next presentation for Red Curtain Foundation of the Art for the Arts. Um, they're She Kills Monsters. Um, the tickets are dated for tomorrow, but you can call and exchange them if tomorrow doesn't work. So two winners. Two winners. So Gail Frost. And we've got um, CFI. Uh, I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Felicia. CFI still here? Yeah. Are she here? Where? Oh, she's over there. Okay, found it. Congratulations. Okay, who's feeling lucky? Who's going to be the next winner? Oh, well, okay, two. All right, but the only I think there's only one gift. <laughs> You name it and you claim it, right? That's, that's, right. How, that's how it works. Renee James with Hometown Value Savings Magazine. So if you're looking to promote your business, we'd love to help you out in the North Snohomish County, which is Smoky Point, Arlington, San Camino, or Marysville, Toledo. Direct mail to 30,000 addresses is all about promoting the local businesses. And so I'm going to promote uh, the Creamery here in Marysville. I have a gift card for some lucky winner. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And on that happy little note, uh, Charles Masters, are you here? Charles? All right. The gift card. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. I think this is our final raffle prize. Yes. And I'm raffling the wine. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know, regifting. Hi, guys. My name is Lily Cervantes with Cruise Planners. I sell land packages, European tours, ocean, river cruises, theme parks like Disney. And um, I have a $50 onboard credit for new uh, cruise bookings for Celebrity, RCI, and NCL. So if you're interested, well, I'm, actually, you're going to get it. But um, if you haven't booked your spring break or summer vacation, Think of me, I would love to help you. My name is Lily Cervantes with Cruise Planners, your landing cruise expert. Allow me to save you time, money, and energy as I coordinate your vacation. Thank you. Jim Cohen from Toyota. Is he here? There he is, okay, I know where he is. Excellent. Well, this concludes my portion of the show. I'd like to reintroduce our president and CEO of the Marysville Toledo Chamber of Commerce. Let's give it up for Yvonne Sepulveda. Thanks, Todd. So let's give Todd another round of applause for his amazingness. Um, so we're a little bit over, so thank you for your patience with us this morning. Um, I just want to say thank you to or. At the Chamber, we want to say thank you to all our members that have renewed for 2022. We cannot do this without you, so thank you for your support. Um, and as you will see on this screen, we have 16 members that have been with the Chamber for 25 plus years, so give them their, your support out in the community. Um, thank you all for believing in the Chamber. Um, don't forget, we have plan I have planned out the whole entire year for 2022. Check out the calendar. Um, we've got some important and fun events coming up. Um, our next big event is our golf tournament, which will happen June 11th. It's in collaboration with the Strawberry Fest. So stay tuned for um, some great and exciting news on that. Um, February 10th is our first quarterly luncheon at the Marysville Opera House. Um, if you haven't registered, please do so. Um, February 25th will be our next business before hours, and that will be um, State of the City with Mayor John Nearing. So, Again, check out the website, look for events, updates on all of that. Um, oh my gosh, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> Try, trying to get you guys out of here. Um, thank you today's sponsor, uh, Coastal Community Bank. Thank you to Olivia Burley with WSDVA for your awesome presentation. Um, thank you to our chamber volunteers and emissaries for all your help today. Um, thank you to Toledo Resort and Casino for having us. And we did change up the menu, so if you have any opinions, Talk to Anne. She made that change. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Talk to me. And a big thank you to our members um, for your ongoing commitment to our great um, chamber community. And have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.